based on them floating from the graveyard or anything like that. You'll have to excuse the Raid Shadow Legends happening in the back. By the way, download Raid Shadow Legends. There's only a day left <laughs> when this video comes out. Uh, shameless plug right there. Um, What is up, YouTube? I am here, finally, with the in-depth Noble Knight guide that I promised you guys. I'm sorry for the delays, but I wanted to make sure that all the information present was up-to-date and proper. Uh, the deck did see several buffs and changes and all sorts of things over the past month, even. So, And it's in a really good state right now, so in my personal belief, it's the best deck in the metagame as of right now, while also being one of the cheapest decks, while also being probably the best free-to-play deck out there as well. Not free-to-play, but low-cost to play, uh, and very beginner-friendly as well. So here's an in-depth guide. Uh, I'll have it split up by chapters at the bottom, uh, you know, based on, you know, what we're doing over. We're going to go over every single card. We're going to go over matchups. We're going to go over everything like that. Um, and if you want to skip ahead to any portion, feel free to do so. Um, I wanted to start off by also shouting out, uh, the DLM guide. I did work on that with a few people from DLM. So if you guys want to go on over there, I'll link a description, uh, down there. If you want a more written guide, you can definitely look into that for Noble Knights. So getting into it, uh, Noble Knights as an archetype, what are they? <laughs> well, they they do a little bit of everything right now, kind of funny enough. They they have a way to OTK, they have a way to control, they have a way to, you know, just sit on back row. Uh, definitely what you would call more of a mid-range uh, archetype, right? They, they don't really excel in any direction, but they do well enough everything. They're well-rounded and can kind of go into any situation. So if that's kind of your play style, if you play other card games, you're more of a mid-range player, this is definitely going to be the deck type uh, for you. Uh, the deck did recently get a structure deck, which pretty much has the entire package in there outside of a few cards. And all of those cards are in a new box uh, that you only have to go through once, essentially, to get the entire deck at full optimum strength. Uh, you know, so <laughs> it's extremely low cost. Uh, 20 bucks plus a couple thousand gems, and you are done for the most part. So super, super clean. Uh, let's go over these cards and these skills and why we're playing. As you can see, we're playing 30 cards. If you played Duel Links for a while, if you're a returning player, you're probably thinking, no, 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 30 cards? <laughs> yeah, I only played 20 cards in Under Riot. What are you talking about? Well, let me explain. So balance... Uh, we have done so many calculations on balance, and this deck actually made us redo a bunch of calculations. Shoutouts to Atlas for doing so. And we have figured out that the ratio of 12, 9, and 9, that means 12 monsters, 9 spells, and 9 traps, will always guarantee a monster, a spell, and trap. Before, it was thought if you're playing 30, you need 10, 10, and 10, which obviously is kind of difficult <laughs> to fit everything in. But 12, 9, and 9 will also guarantee, which is huge knowledge for us. Uh, because now we can reliably play 30 cards balance and always open up one of each, allowing us to go into our combos more effectively. So let's start off with monsters. The most important monster, the most important card, period, in all of Noble Knights. Noble Knight Madrat. So he is what we would consider a starter in this. If, uh, if, if you need, there's actually a glossary of all the terms, starter, OTK, all these terms that I'll be using. Uh in the DLE Discord, so make sure to join the Discord uh, and look for that glossary guide that has all those words. Now Madrat, he, when he's on the field, he's considered a normal monster, and when he's equipped with a noble arm, that's kind of like Noble Knight's whole thing, you have a Noble Knight monster and then a noble arm equip card, right, their sword and shields that would equip to them. When he becomes equipped, that's when he becomes a, uh, a dark type monster. So he goes from light to dark. He becomes a level 5, so no longer a level 4, which is very important because the XCs require certain levels, as all do all XCs. Um, and he gains uh, an effect and becomes an effect monster. So Noble Knight Madrat, his effect is you can uh, summon any Noble Knight monster, regardless of level, from your deck to the field. And then you can pop uh, any equip card. It does not have to be a noble equip. It can be any equip card on your side of the board. So <laughs> there's there's a lot of in-depth 
stuff that goes with the card, but just for simplicity's sake, um, you basically summon Madrat, you use any of your noble equips, it doesn't matter which one you use, and then you summon out any other noble knight monster so you can continue making effective plays. Now a common trait of all the noble arms that we currently have in the game is that they will all float from the graveyard, meaning when they get destroyed, they have to be destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Once per turn, you'll be able to re-equip it to any monster on the board. So if you wanted to, you could do Madrat, pop the equip, and then re-equip it to Madrat if you really, really wanted to. Although you usually will not be doing that. What you will be doing instead is the standard bread and butter combo where you do Madrat, equip, and then you would summon a Noble Knight Boars. Now Boars is very similar to Madrat. And in situations where you do not get a Madrat in your turn one, you'd rather you'd, you'd at least want Boars because he can set you up uh, for the future. Now, Boris does the same thing. He's a level 4 light type monster, but when he becomes equipped, normal type monster, when he becomes equipped, he becomes level 5, he becomes effect, and he turns into a dark type. These are all things to remember because a lot of people, for example, if they're doing something like Light Imprisoning Mirror, Light Imprisoning Mirror isn't going to be able to affect your, your Boars and your Madra because they'll be dark monsters, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, Noble Knight Boars, what he does when you activate his effect, uh, he must be equipped with a Noble Arm. You can select three Noble Arm cards, uh, and um, your opponent will, so out of your deck, your opponent will select one of those. One of those goes to your hand, and the other two go to the graveyard. Now, you'll see as we go more in depth with the cards that are available for this mill effect, uh, that essentially just takes three cards out of your deck and puts them into play because even though only one gets added to your hand uh, You do are you are able to um, use those other equip cards uh, based on um, Based on them floating from the graveyard or anything like that You'll have to excuse the raid shadow legends happening in the back by the way download raid shadow legends There's only a day left <laughs> when this video comes out uh, shameless plug right there um, so that is super, super important to keep in mind uh, for you guys, um, that even though those cards are going to the graveyard, they're still going to be in play because other cards affect them in the graveyard. Uh, to go over the other monsters that we have, Noble Knight Dristan. This is a one-of monster, typically, in the deck. Uh, he can be summoned. Uh, he is different from Boars and Madrat. He's always considered an effect monster, always considered light, and always considered a level 4. So it doesn't matter if he gets equipped, he will always be those levels and effects and everything like that. Uh, he has two sided effects. Uh, the one that you'll be doing the most is when a Noble Equip is equipped to him. A mandatory pop effect, so you have to select one face-up card on the board and destroy it. This is mandatory. You cannot choose to decline this effect. So you do have to be a little bit careful when you're equipping to Dristan. And ideally, you would pop up, you know, either a monster to open up pathway to lethal or something that's hard to take care of, or a face-up, you know, Necro Valley or Zombie World or something like that. If you're able to equip Dristan, uh, with any card like that, you can pop those cards, or destroy, in another word. Um, this is typically left at 1, uh, because it can be summoned with Driss or with Madra effect, and a, um, another effect that we'll talk about later when we get to the trap section of, of, of this deck. Uh, so you only really typically need one of him. Sometimes you see two, but very, very rarely will you end up seeing two. Uh... The last Noble Knight monster we'll be talking about is Pelinor. Now, Pelinor's spot can be taken by other Noble Knights. This is kind of the, the free slot that you get. Pelinor is the most popular one. Uh, he has a really cool fit. So he's similar to Dristan, where he's always a light monster, always level 4, regardless of when you equip. And his effect is you can pop a Noble Arm that's equipped to him, uh, and then you can select a, a face-up monster uh, that your opponent controls, and then you would destroy the equip and that monster at the same time, which bypasses protection cards that uh, if those protection cards say uh, only that monster is protected. So for example, Xi'an with Fuma in the grave, if you selected both, they would both get popped, so it wouldn't just be Xi'an getting popped. Uh, also, before I continue with Pelinor, <laughs> before I forget, Dristan does have another effect that people forget, where any Noble Knight monster with less than 1800 attack cannot be targeted uh, with monster uh, attacks or um, 
uh, monster targeting or any targeting effects either. So if you have a Madrot Driston combo, for example, Driston's going to be protecting Madrot from any uh, attacks and any sort of um, uh, you know Karma Cut or anything like that. They have to target Driston instead. Uh, this also works if you <laughs> somehow manage to get two Dristons on the board and they're both under. That 1800, uh, this, you can see Dristan's exactly 1800. If you get them both under 1800 and you have two Dristans, you essentially lock your opponent. But that's really, really hard to do and usually only happens in cheese decks, not Noble Knights themselves. So, one last thing about Dristan. Going back to Pelinor, though, when you destroy, uh, if you destroy anything with Pelinor, so either your equip or your opponent, or both. So even if it's something that's protected, like a Neos that has a Neos fusion, and only your equip card gets destroyed, you can still draw a card with Pelinor. That's this, you know, that's the other thing. And if you read the text, uh, it says um, destroy them, then draw one card. So if you're able to destroy them, you get your draw power. But if neither gets destroyed for whatever reason. Uh, then you don't get any draw power out of that. So super super important to keep in mind. Uh, like I said, the, it, it's not mandatory to run Pelinor. Uh, there are some people who still like running, for example, uh, Noble Knight Brothers. This is a very popular card to run in his spot. Uh, Noble Knight Brothers, when you summon him, you can summon up to two more Noble Knights uh, from your hand, regardless of level. Again, you can summon, uh, summon them from the hand. Uh, so that can be really clutch for some XC's plays. Also, he has a really, really, he's really, really good in the grind game uh, because you can uh, shuffle up to three cards from the graveyard, three Noble Knight or Noble Arm equips uh, from your graveyard back into the deck. And then if you do that, you get to draw a card, uh, which is super cool. <laughs> it's a really cool secondary effect uh, that he has. Um, the only downside is he can't, he can't actually attack if he is the only one on the board. There needs to be at least three Noble Knight monsters, including himself, on the board for him to attack. Uh, so he's not as offensive as a Pelinor, will, or where a Pelinor, um, you know, when he uses his effect, he can't attack afterwards, but, you know, you can either, you, if you don't want to use the effect, you can just attack with him, uh, or you can use, for example, a, a really cool combo is equipping Pelinor, popping something with Pelinor, which pops the equip, which forces the, what doesn't force, but can allow the equip to come back, which then forces a Dristan. If you have a Dristan on your board as well, you can re-equip to Dristan and essentially pop two face-up cards uh, and then and draw a card. Where brothers would be, you know, summon and then, you know, put cards back into your deck and draw. Uh, so both serve completely different purposes. Uh, there really isn't space for both of them because, you know, opening up them... Uh, with balance, because again, balance guarantees monster, trap, and spell, but if you open Brothers or Pelinor, those are like the least ideal ones, where even if you just open up Dristan, you can still make some plays with Dristan. <laughs> those two you really don't want to be opening with, um, so the, they kind of trade spots in, in, in the actual list of, of monsters that you'll have. Um, the other one that uh, people sometimes play, uh, they played him more in the beginning, he's kind of dropped off uh, a little bit, is the Ignoble Knight. Uh, Black Lysandal, was Lysandal, whatever we call him, Laundry Man, the greatest. Uh, he's a level 5, always a dark type, so a little bit different from the Ignoble Knights, they're not light, they're all light, he's dark. Um, he has a really cool effect where if he's in the graveyard or uh, or in your hand, you can send a light normal monster, so your Madra or your Boars, to special summon him. You can also tribute a Noble Knight monster to add a uh, Noble Arm to your um, to your hand. Uh, so those effects, so that effect is obviously really really clutch for getting rid of floodgated monsters. Um, it can also be really good because there's a, another card in the game, Gwynefer. I'll talk a little bit more about her when we get to the spell section because she's more of a spell than a monster. Uh, but just know that on dark monsters, she provides destruction. And he's always a dark monster. So if you're up against something like Witchcrafter uh, that's doing a lot of uh, effect negation, if you get a Boar's negated or a Madrot negated, they are no longer dark monsters. So you don't get the dark pop of Gwynefer where uh, Ignoble Knight will always have that pop effect. So... He's another Noble Knight uh, that some people see play. Again, takes the Pelinor spot if you wanted to play him. Uh, I still, right now in this current metagame, prefer the Pelinor over him, though. But something to keep in mind. Uh, moving on to the other monster that's in here. You can see is actually a Spellcaster. Not a, <laughs> he's not a Noble Knight. He's not um, a Warrior. He's a Spellcaster. Merlin 
This is the card that you want to open. Turn number one, you want your balance to give you this monster. Um, basically, what he does is, as an ignition effect, you can tribute him off the board, and you can special summon any Noble Knight monster from your deck. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> so I remember I said before, Madrot is your best card in the whole deck. You're playing six Madrots, essentially. Um, and Merlin, he's almost never bad to like actually even just top deck, right? Uh, if you if you open up turn one, you go into your Madrot, and you go into your Madrot Boars combo, and that goes into all your other combos. Uh, if you draw him later in the game, it, just just being able to summon any of your Noble Knights is still a good effect uh, with no restrictions, essentially. Just summon them onto the board. And he has a secondary effect where, as a quick effect, uh, you can XC summon with the, with the monsters that you have on the board. So that means during your opponent's turn, your turn, when, or if your opponent active, whenever. It's a quick effect. You can chain to other card effects. You can activate him and then using the monsters that you currently control, go into an Exceeds monster. So let's say your opponent has a completely open board and you have two uh, level five monsters, Madrot and Boars in attack mode. You can attack with Madrot, you can attack with Boars, and then in the battle phase, quick effect, uh, banish Merlin from the grave, Exceeds summon, and then attack again with your new Exceeds monster that you made. Um, Another example is your opponent activates Karma Cut and targets one of your monsters. And you say, you know what? I don't really <laughs> want that to happen. You can activate Merlin from the grave. Exceeds right away. Uh, Merlin summons up your new Exceeds monster. And then Karma Cut resolves with no effect. So really, really cool utility. Amazing all-around card. Let's you search your win condition faster. Let's you... It is a win condition in itself. <laughs> really, really no reason not to play this at three. You need to be playing it at three. He is in the structure, so it's super easy to get. Uh, all these monsters except the Pelinor, the brothers, um, are are in, in the structure deck. So you should, if you just buy the structure deck at three, you'll already have them. So there you go. Uh, and then, yeah, so him at three, Madrod at three, Boars at two, Driston one, Pelinor slash brother slash laundry man all at one. The last monster, Gwynefer, uh, she is actually more of a spell card, so we're transitioning more into the equips here and the spell cards that we use. Uh, Gwynefer is basic is is considered a noble arm, so you can send her away with Boar's Effect. Uh, and then once per turn, either from the hand or from the graveyard, she can equip to any noble knight monster. Now, all the other equips can be equipped to warrior-type monsters, not noble knight monsters. They can be equipped to warrior types. Gwynefer specifically says any noble knight monster. This is huge because when you go up against things like DNA surgery, zombie world, you know, these things that change you from a warrior type to a different type of monster... Uh, she can still equip, which can be really clutch in getting out of those sticky, sticky situations. Uh, of course, like I said, she can activate from the graveyard, so you can use Boar's Effect to send her to the graveyard, and if she ends up in the hand or the graveyard, it doesn't matter. She can still be used as an equip, and of course, all the Noble Knights, when they have equips on them, all have different effects that she can trigger, right? Uh, Gwynefer onto the Noble Knight Madra can summon a monster. Gwynefer on Boars can let him use a search effect. Gwynefer on Driston triggers as a mandatory effect, etc., etc., so really, really clutch for that. She does not float after being popped. So if you did do a, uh, you know, Madrot into Gwynefer, Gwynefer is in the graveyard and it's only once per turn, so she can't come back. You have to keep that in mind uh, when playing her. She also has a secondary effect where depending on the element of the monster she's equipped to, uh, she'll give them different effects. So if she equips to a light monster, which is all your Exceeds, Dristin, Pelinor, uh, and Brothers, if you play Brothers, uh, and... Um, yeah, pretty much just those for the most part. Uh, she will give them a round of protection. So if they're going to be destroyed by a monster effect, for example, Raigeki Break, uh, she can pop herself so she gets destroyed, sent to the graveyard instead, and that monster will not be destroyed. So she'll be destroyed instead. Um, if she equips to a dark type monster... At the start of the damage step, remember damage step, <laughs> not when you, you know, it's like the very start of the damage step. Uh, if it's a dark type monster, 
then she can destroy herself and then destroy the monster that you're attacking into, which is super clutch because, you know, for example, if you swing into a U-Bell, U-Bell will miss timing because it's kind of like a mini chain that happens. The monster is destroyed, then she's destroyed. So it, it like, it blocks things uh, automatically. Uh, remember that Madra and Boars become level fives when they're equipped with any noble equip, including Gwynefer. And then this is super important for the ignoble knight He's always dark, so if if these guys get effects negated, Dark Lord negates or Witchcrafter negates, they become light monsters. <laughs> so they don't get the pop effect. But Noble Knight, even if you negate him, you still get that clutch uh, um, destruction, which can be super, super huge. It is non-targeting, uh, and of course, when she goes to the grave, it's essentially once per turn, right? Because you can equip her once per turn, and then it happens once per turn, and then it's just gone after that. But it can be really, really clutch. Um, anything that can't be targeted but can still be destroyed. Luna Light uh, Saber Dancer, for example. Gwynefer is your answer to that. So that's one of the first Noble Arms. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about, uh, probably the most important one uh, outside of Gwynefer, Noble Arm of Destiny. Now these equips are the ones that float from the graveyard. They all have the context of... Um, uh, if this face-up card in the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, target one warrior type Noble Knight monster you control, equip this uh, card to the target. can only be used once per turn. Uh, all of these equips that I'm going to be talking about have that clause in them. Now, Destiny, you play two of Destiny because uh, whatever monster it's equipped to, once per turn, uh, if that monster will be destroyed, either by battle or card effect, it's not destroyed. <laughs> so you essentially, whatever Noble Knight is equipped with this, has to be popped twice, which can be extremely annoying uh, for certain decks to pierce through. So that's what Destiny does. Um, Noble Arms Galatin. Uh, you equip it to an, a warrior-type monster, it gains 1,000 attack points, but every standby phase, you lose 200 attack points on that monster. So it's a really good boost in the beginning, but remember that it will keep ticking down, so you can't, you can't rely on it too much. Uh, next one, Caliburn. Uh, whatever monster is equipped with it, whatever warrior-type gains 500 attack, and then every uh, every time this card lands on the field you can activate it to gain 500 life points. So for example, if I have a Madrat and Caliburn, I can drop the Madrat, activate Caliburn, gain 500 life, destroy Caliburn, summon Boars, re-equip the Caliburn, activate it again, gain 500 life, exceed summon, the equip comes back, activate it again, plus 1500 turn one. That is extremely relevant against OTK decks specifically. Because uh, a lot of OTK typically does around forty-eight to five thousand damage, and if they if they're actually not able to clear that five thousand five thousand five hundred range, because of Caliburn, you could potentially survive an OTK that you otherwise would not have been able to. So pretty clutch card to keep in mind um, when you're going up against those strategies. Uh, next we have is Arf Noble Ar Arms and Arf Deter Arf is what we just call it. <laughs> um, this one you can make your monster lose whatever it's equipped to exactly 500 attack. And if that happens, if it loses 500 attack, you can select one set card on the board, destroy it. So set monster, set back row, doesn't matter as long as it's face down, gets popped. The thing to keep in mind though is it has to remain set. So if they flip it up, uh, it will not be popped. But if it's something that resets itself, for example, Subterror Final Battle activates, you do the effect, and then it resets. As long as it's set by the by this card's resolution, it will be popped. So that's something to keep in mind uh, with the uh, with the Noble Arms. The other equip cards that you'll see a lot is Glory of the Noble Knights. Uh, it is a quick play spell, so you can chain it on your opponent's turn or your turn uh, in response to effects that they use. Uh, you target a Noble Knight monster you control, equip one equip spell to that target. Any equip spell does not have to be <laughs> a Noble Arm. So if you wanted to go full memes, dude, glory into power of the Guardian, let's go. <laughs> don't do that. That's not a good idea, so don't do that. <laughs> but you could if you wanted to. Um, the applications for this are usually just you open it with balance and it's just a starter card to search whatever Noble Equip is most relevant to that situation or for example if you're going up against something like cyber dragon and they went turn uh, turn you know first turn they set up overflow and you know they have overflow uh you know you could set up your plays and then when they go to destroy you you can activate glory glory will uh resolve before whatever you know they they're trying to do you could put like a noble arm of destiny on your monster and then bam you can no longer be destroyed uh, and if they destroy the equip card it just floats back at that point so 
really clutch card for that purpose. You can also do it like in your battle phase if you're if you just wanted to check they have sphere like it's like oh I have lethal, but I'm not sure if I should wait for sphere Karibo or not. You could swing, see if there's sphere, activate glory, put Galaton on, you know, and then redirect the attack again because you know now there's no sphere Karibo, etc. 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 There's a lot of uses for it. Uh, of course, you know, you can also just have a Dristan uh, face up on the board, have this set, and then when your opponent tries to go do something, you activate this, equip Dristan, mandatory pop, boom, destroy on their turn. So, really, really good uh, for that purpose. I definitely would not, um, you know, and I, I've seen some lists start to drop glory, but I, I like glory too much to drop it. I, I think it's kind of a staple. Uh, in Noble Knights. You could still play up to two because it's hard to kind of play three, but because we're playing balance and we, we want to satisfy balance, we play we play the three. Uh, moving on to the trap lineup, I'm going to talk about the, um, the Noble Trap, and then we'll talk about kind of the staple traps that you can use uh, instead. Uh, until noble arms are needed once more, this does count as a noble arm uh, card, so it can be sent with the boars. And I should mention all these are noble arms. <laughs> Clearly, if it wasn't obvious before, they all have noble arm in the name. They can all be sent with boars uh, as well, or added, searched with boars. You can, for example, do arf, arf, Gwynefer, and then you have a 66% chance to get an arf added to your hand, right? Because there's two arfs and one Gwynefer, and your opponent has to choose. So pretty good chance they'll get that arf. Um... Until Noble Arms are needed again has two effects. If you uh, flip it face up from the field, uh, you can excavate uh, the number a number of um, uh, cards from the top of your deck based on the number of quips you can have. So up to two, essentially, because of the three zone limit, and this being one of those cards. So you essentially look at the two cards at the top of your deck. Uh, you can add one of them to the hand, and then you return the others in the correct order. So essentially, you draw one, because <laughs> whatever you don't draw, you know, you're going to draw next time. Uh, from your follow-up plays so that you know it's a jar of greed effect it's not that great if, if that ends up happening but more importantly uh, if it's in the graveyard except for the turn that it was sent there uh, if it's in the graveyard you can activate it banish it and you can summon a noble knight monster from your deck that is not currently in your graveyard or on the field Super huge. <laughs> I, we play this at three to satisfy balance, but you could you could honestly play it at two as well. Um, if you go turn one and you set up Madrop Boars and you send two of these bad boys into the graveyard, that means you can summon a monster on your opponent's turn and then summon a monster on your turn, which is crazy. So <laughs> if you you know the perfect opening is you open up the Merlin. The Merlin goes into the Madrot. Madrot, you make your uh, Boar's Madrot combo. And then you would, on your opponent's turn, when they try to make a play, you would chain Merlin, or not chain, but activate Merlin, chain link one. And then you would activate the trap, chain link two. The trap would summon Dristan. The uh, Exceeds monster would be made between Madrot and Boars, which would be a rank five at that point. The equips fall off. The equips give you a prompt to re-equip. You re-equip to Dristan. Dristan mandatory pop. Pops a monster on their board. Crazy. <laughs> that combo is available to you. And then after that, on your turn, if you had another one in the grave, you can activate until Noble Arms are needed again. Summon the Pelinor. And because uh, Madrot and Boars um, are equipped to the um, to the Xyz monster, they're considered Xyz materials. They're in this mystical Xyz plane, so your trap can also summon Madraw or Boars if you wanted to as well, instead of the Pelinor, if you didn't have a reason to go into Pelinor at that point. Uh, Xyz materials, until they're detached, are not considered a part of the field. They're just in a different area, <laughs> which is wild, because technically they are on the field, but not by the game's understanding. So, you know... If, but it, and then if the, the Exceeds monster gets destroyed and they go to the graveyard, then now they're locked out of the trap. So keep in mind uh, that small tidbit of information. Uh, but yeah, extremely powerful card. Being able to search whatever monster you want for any situation is super, super, super powerful. Uh, it makes your deck very, very, very consistent. Um the other traps, they're kind of up to you. Uh, discard traps are really good. These are the traps that I most prefer and kind of the lineup I most prefer. Karma Cut is, of course, really, really strong in the current metagame. You discard a card and you banish a monster. Very powerful effect, especially when you get until Noble Arms in the hand, if Boris puts it in the hand, or if it just happens to be one of the traps that you open. Discard traps are really, really good to getting those into the graveyard and allowing you to snowball the advantage that you're building up from, from that happening. 
Uh, I personally like Mo Raigeki Break more uh, because Noble Knights are kind of becoming this premier deck that everyone's countering. Raigeki Break is really good for outing, uh, you know, Necro Valleys, um, outing Zombie World, just taking out back row. Karma Cut cannot hit back row, so Raigeki Break's really good at doing that uh, to clear up your plays for the following turn. Um, and of course, can still hit monsters and destroy them. It just doesn't banish, which Karmica is more specialized in banishing. So the, 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 the cards are taken care of, you know, permanently at that point. So I started running more Raigeki Breaks than Karma, but you can easily run more Karma than Raigeki Breaks. It's honestly preference at that point. Uh, you could also be running Ballista Squad. Ballista Squad is another card that's been coming up more and more, uh, in Noble Knights. Um... The, it's just a good card for taking out your floodgated monsters. Uh, there's also another, there's an X Seeds that floats when it's sent to the graveyard. We'll talk about in just a little bit here. Uh, that this one combos with very, very well, essentially giving you a free Ballista Squad. <laughs> so free Raigeki Break because your trap activates from the grave. Free Karma Cut, free Ballista Squad. These are typically why these traps are being used. But you can use things like Divine Wrath, Ultimate Providence, anything that discards or anything that takes advantage of the insane resource management and generation that Noble Knights have. It's just going to be really, really good in this archetype. So uh, you just want to make sure you hit that nine trap numbers, that magic number for the balance to activate. Now, speaking of the Exceeds monster, the one that you'll probably be making the most, Sacred Noble Knight of King Arturgus. Uh, this guy is really, really good. <laughs> uh, rank 5, so you'll be making him with your Madra and Boars, and if you play the Ignoble Knight, you'll be making with him as well. Uh, the Exceeds, this one and one of the rank 4s, uh, what they do is when they are Exceed summoning, uh, so it can miss the timing, so if you chain Merlin to another card effect, you can you can potentially miss the timing of his initial effect. Uh, you can add um, you can add as many noble equips from the graveyard to this monster. Uh, so let's say Boar sent Destiny, Gallatin, Caliburn, and all you had was Arf. Uh, well, when this guy gets made, you can add those cards and equip them to this card without um, without triggering you know their once per turn float effect. So they you know noble arms can essentially float more times than just once with the power of King Artorgus, so this is how you'd get that 1500 from Caliburn if you wanted to do something like that. Um, he also has another effect where once per turn he can you can detach material and you can just destroy a monster on your opponent's side of the field, so <laughs> destruction effect that he doesn't even really need at that point, really, really powerful. Uh, 2200 attack, 2200 defense, pretty good stat line, especially with the Noble Equips giving him more attack um, and, you know, Destiny making him more defensive as well really cool effect that he can, uh, that can be used for aggressive plays. When he's sent from the field to the graveyard, uh, you can target one level four or lower Noble Knight monster and special summon it. So this is what I was talking about with that Ballista Squad. You tribute the Arturgus to take out a back row, uh, and then you can summon any of the Noble Knights. You're going to have Madrat and Boars at the very least in your graveyard, and you might have some other ones uh, in there as well. You can just pick them up and put them back on the field. Uh, if this was your only monster and you put back like a Madrat, for example, to take out a back row, well, as long as you have an equip card, you can just go right into another Artorgus with little to no cost at that point. Um, so very, 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 very powerful uh, for that effect. Uh, the second one would be the Artorgus King of the Noble Knights. Uh, this is the 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 rank four version of of Arcturus. Um Similar effect when he gets a, a summoned, you can equip as many cards as available, uh, and then if you detach a material, you can non-targeting pop back row any spell or trap on the field based on the number of spell tr or uh, noble arms that you have currently on your side of the board. It does not have to be equipped to him. Uh, so you can obviously use this to clear your opponent's back row. You can use this to pop your own arms and refloat them to other monsters. Uh, so for example, this guy can come out, uh, he can uh, grab all the equips from the graveyard, equip it to himself, and then decide, you know what, <laughs> I don't want to be the one equipped with all these things. So let's go ahead and pop some of these, re-equip to Dristan, re-equip to Pelinor, whatever the case may be, just to get them out of the graveyard. Uh, he can be used for that purpose. Uh, I play them at 1. Uh, the King Artorg is the other one, the rank 5. You play at 2. I think 2 is a good number for him. You play this guy at 1 because he is kind of situational based on the metagame. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of, like, 
traps, you know, a lot of the traps are like, you know, Regeki Break, Karma Cut, you're going to be using them right away. You don't see things like Drowning and Wall of D as much, so, <laughs> you know, it's not just going to be, if there's back row, it's going to be used immediately against you. It's not going to be like a simple, um, you know, yeah, I'll let you bring out your guy and pop my stuff and be fine with it. It's just, it's just really not going to happen in that situation. Uh, he does not have a float effect when destroyed, though, so if he did, he might see more play. He might play two of them, but unfortunately, does not. Uh, next one we're going to talk about, Sacred Noble Knight of King Custodin. This is the last Noble Knight specific exceeds that you'll be playing. A uh, very small stat line and does not float the Noble Equips from your graveyard like the other guys do, but has a really, really nice Bryonic effect. So you can use up to two two plus level four Noble Knight monsters. So you can, you can do three into this guy if you really wanted to. Uh, and you can detach any number of materials, target that many cards your opponent controls, and return them to the hand. <laughs> so if you if you play Bryonic Dragon, you know what this guy does, pretty much. Um, usually you'll be making him with two materials. Uh, you'll, you can do trap one of the trap cards. You can banish one on your opponent's turn, one on your turn, and then on your turn, you can bounce two uh, cards your opponent controls, either monsters or spell or trap cards. So typically, you'll be using this to take out, you know, annoying monsters, annoying fusion monsters, synchro monsters. They lose all, you know, they lose those permanently exceeds monsters. They lose the materials for those. Uh, you can also use him just to, you know, force out back row. If they're trying to save their back row for as long as possible, you can force it out with this guy uh, and then follow up afterwards. Because um, another really cool effect is if he gets destroyed by an opponent's card effect uh, or, you know, opponents battling you... Um, or actually any effect, not your opponent, sorry, I misspoke there. It can be any effect, so you can even, like, your own effects, right? Geki Break, you can even use Sacred King of Arcturgus to pop him. Uh, he will, you can summon any Noble Knight Exceeds from your deck, uh, which counts as an Exceed Summon, and then you can um, put King Custodin as a material to that Exceeds monster. So, you know, you could, for example, if he gets destroyed, you can bring out a King Arcturgus, he's ex that he's considered Exceed Summoned at that point, so he can take equip cards from your graveyard and equip them, uh, and then you can use King Arcturgus effect immediately, because you can just send King Custodin uh, that's equipped to him, or ex attached to him, um, to get off his effect. So, very, very powerful. Recommend playing two. You can get away with playing with one, but <laughs> I just think it's too too good not to play it two. Uh, having that bounce effect is just ridiculous to open you up for the one-turn one kill OTK potential that the deck has. Uh, the last two spots are kind of up to whatever you want to do. I generally tell people playing the Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, is really, really good in this archetype. Uh, you can make him, uh, if you have a five or six Exceeds monster, it's just one material at, the, at that point to just summon him up. Uh, he's really good for, for example, if your Sacred Knight King Arcturus gets Fiendish Chained, you can just go ahead into Gaia, and he's free from the chains. Or if you don't even want to do that, you just because uh, Gaia has the piercing damage. Uh, if you have a Dristan face up on your board or a Pelinor, you can go ahead into the Sacred uh, Noble Knight. That would drop the equip cards because he's technically being removed from the field, uh, and you can refloat those to other monsters like Dristan for a sneaky little pop. So I usually tell people like, yeah, this this card's clutch. <laughs> when it when it pops up, it pops up. Now the last slot, it's kind of up to you what you want to play. Uh, I've been playing the new selection box card, the Star Liege uh, Pilot, Pilot Dynamo. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, <laughs> he's really cool. You detach two materials. He it takes two light uh, level four monsters, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change attacks to zero, and negate its effects. Uh, this can open you up to OTK, potentially, the same way Luna Light's OTK, uh, by making a monster you know zero attack and then swinging into it. So if you have Kiteroid or anything like that, it doesn't really matter at that point. They're still going to lethal you through it. Um, or if you could just use it to negate a monster if you wanted to do that. Uh, the other one that people, um, that works very, very well with this, Diamond Direwolf is really good. Um, where if you, you know, two level four monsters and you pop him and another, um, uh, monster or any card on the field, not monster on the field, any card. Uh, and this is really good because he's an earth. <laughs> so if you're not going to play that, if you don't want to go into selection box, you can just play this guy. He's an SR in a mini box, super, super cheap compared to the, uh, the paladin. Um, and it's an earth. So if they're playing something like light imprisoning mirror to stop your noble knights, cause they're mostly light monsters, uh, and definitely stopping your XC's monsters from activating. You can just go into diamond dire wolf. He's an earth lets you out a lot more things. Um, there is also Black Ship of Corn, 
which is really good because it can send uh, monsters with less than 2100 rather than destroy them. But it's kind of fallen out uh, because of King Custodian bouncing stuff back to the hand. Uh, before you would use this for Wind of V or if you were able to get through the effects and stuff like that. But it's honestly just better to get to King Custodian and just bounce instead. Uh, it doesn't have the restriction either of not being able to attack and... Um, the restriction of it being having to be like you know a certain attack also can custom and can bounce back row but if you don't have diamond dire wolf and you don't have that then this isn't that bad still to play with king custom as well uh, there are multiple situations where both will be available for you to summon so so it's not bad just not my preferred one all right so we went a little bit over the core cards that are available uh let's go over some of the um side deck cards because everything i just mentioned can pretty much be played just in ranked if you wanted to do that or if you wanted to build a tournament deck you can kind of start with that core list uh keep in mind there are also other lists out there that use different skills my monster cards um spell specialist all these things i do recommend doing the balance build first because usually those builds are more specialized uh where balance is more just overall everything plus you'll be learning a lot more of noble knights as you go along and you can start specializing afterwards if you really really wanted to uh, let's talk about the side deck and potentially other cards to use when in tournament play which of course is a huge huge focus for dle um Cards that that control back row like Cosmic Cyclone and Hey True Nade are very powerful because back row is what stops Noble Knights. The way you beat them is when they go to summon their Merlin, activate their Madra, or activate their Boars. Um, you know, one of the best things you can do is immediately interrupt that, and that pretty much shuts down their entire play. They can't set up their board, and if they can't set up their board, they just become way too far behind. So you can do that. The only thing to keep in mind is balance uh, only guarantees one <laughs> spell trap monster. So if it doesn't uh, guarantee your equip card and guarantees cosmic or true nade, you may not be able to play the game, even though you only have them at one. Uh, something to keep in mind. Same for enemy controller. Enemy controller is really good in the mirror match, being able to econ take monsters. Uh, also being econ, being able to econ take when they go to try and activate like karma cut or something, you can tribute your monster, take one of their monsters and potentially try to go for plays works better in the mirror, but can, it can work out in other, um, duels as well. Unending nightmare, uh, on the other flip side, going into the trap scene is it's much easier to side trap cards because trap cards are more flexible. Uh, the Karma Cuts and Raigeki Breaks and uh, breaks and everything like that, the Ballista Squads, those are all kind of specific to the metagame and can be switched out at any time. Unending Nightmare is really cool because you pay a 1,000 life points, target one face-up spell trap on the field, destroy it. Uh, this can be used to take out Necro Valleys, Zombie World, stuff like that, or you could just use it to pop your own Noble Equips and force them to um, float uh, back. Uh, you can even do this on your opponent's turn, uh, float one and then put it back on Dristan uh, to further plays. Kind of moving forward with that is also Treacherous Trap Hole. This deck does not currently have limit uh, limit twos or limit threes, so you can abuse both True Nade and TTH. And of course, because of balance, <laughs> you have a pretty good chance of opening TTH. And because of the noble um, noble trap banishing itself, this trap is actually live quite a bit. So good thing to keep in mind. There's also things like Typhoon, if you wanted face-up destruction for Necro Valley or Zombie World, you can use this instead of Cosmic, uh, because it's a trap, so it won't affect your balance when it comes to equip cards. And of course, uh, Hollow Life Barrier, another discard trap, that can also protect your monsters if you want to play a more passive style game, or if you find yourself in a tough situation, uh, discard traps, again, just work very, 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 very well for Noble Knights. Now, for a few um, tips and tricks of what to summon and when to summon it, um, again, I kind of mentioned before that uh, when monsters are attached to the Exceeds monsters, they're not considered on the field, so the trap card can summon them. So you want to try and maximize uh, when you summon and when you set stuff. So for example, if you have another monster on the board, Madrot can't actually activate his effect unless he's the only monster on the board. Uh, so, you know, if you're just going to exceeds summon, right, that's all you're looking to do. Uh, and uh, King Arcturus has two things attached to him already then summoning the Madrot just to thin your deck uh, to go into a rank four is going to be very, very, very powerful 
because you're not using Madra for anything else, you know. But if you needed to pop monsters, you would bring out Dristan or or uh, Pelinor. Or if you wanted to, you know, they have back row and you wanted to um, uh, pop it with Arf because you have an Arf available, you wouldn't want to bring out Madra or Boars with your trap because then they would become level 5 and then you couldn't chain Merlin from the graveyard, for example, um, to stop that effect. So it's very important to keep in mind where your monsters are and at what periods of time. That way they don't... Um, they don't get you know dominated uh, by those instances. Uh, also, like whenever you're going to go detach materials to activate the exceeds effects, uh, it's very important to remember that when they become detached, they're sent to the graveyard. So, for example, if you have a rank five, you have Madrat and Boars attached to it. Um, you know, you don't want to be sending something like uh, Boars. You'd rather send Madrat because Boars can still have an effect later on. If you want to summon him with the trap card, uh, you can you can you can summon him later and activate your your equip cards. To, or search for your equip cards where Madra would not be able to be able to activate his effect. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind on when to search things and when to mill things. Speaking of milling things, boars, uh, basically whatever you select with boars, you will have access to. That's, so that's kind of how you have to think about it. Uh, so eat, like for example, let's say your opponent just has an open board. Well, an Artorgus equipped with Caliburn and Gallatin and Guinefer is exactly 4,000 attack points. So, <laughs> usually the combo is you go Gwynefer and two trap cards, and then that way you Gwynefer, you know, hopefully ends up in the graveyard. You'll have a trap in the graveyard, and then one trap in the hand that can be used for material for Raigeki Break or Karma Cut. However, if you see opportunity for lethal, you could instead literally just go Gwynefer, Caliburn, Gallatin, make your XCs, and in, from your graveyard, you're going to grab your Caliburn, you're going to grab your Gallatin, and then regardless of where she ends up, Gwynefer... You can just equip her from the grave or the hand. So whatever you mill with boars, essentially just think of him going uh, plus three at that point, right? Because those cards aren't really being sent anywhere. They're, they're being put into play to be used. Um, that's kind of how you have to think about it. So let's say, for example, uh, you open up your trap card, right? So you don't necessarily need to search uh, double trap Gwynefer. Um, and then you have like a glory of the noble knights. You can, instead of doing Glory of the Noble Knights into Destiny uh, for a Madrat, you could do Madrat, uh, Glory of the Noble Knights, equip the Caliburn, uh, go all the way up, you know, gain either 1,000 or 1,500 life, and just make sure with boars you send a Destiny to the graveyard. So whenever you do summon Artorgus, you can draw up that Destiny from the grave, and now Destiny's in play, even though uh, and you, Destiny's in play and you gain 1,000 extra points instead of just going into the Glory and um, right away into the destiny. So that's another thing, little little cool trick to keep in mind when you uh, when you kind of look at that. Also, don't forget that Gwynefer can equip to any Noble Knight monster, not just warrior type. So if you have to do like an emergency, like oh my god, he's got Necro Valley, or oh my god, he's got Zombie World, <laughs> you know, mostly Zombie World. You could summon Dristan, uh, equip equip him with that Gwynefer, pop the Zombie World, and now you are reopen essentially for business. Uh, to finish everything up. All right, so now I have a few replays that I want to show you, just kind of showing you the basics uh, of Noble Knights and kind of how the combos work and what you're kind of looking to do with the deck. So you can see here I'm going against a spicy hero player. <laughs> it's actually, even if it was just normal heroes, he would have gotten destroyed, but he gets into some really interesting territory uh, with this hero build. He summons three monsters, you know, does this whole thing with heroes, and then he decides to tribute into an obelisk the tormentor. Now, obelisk, for people who don't know, cannot be targeted uh, by card effects. So I can't do Dristan pops, I can't do Arcturus pops, I can't, you know, bounce him back with King Custodian. This is where Gwynefer comes in clutch. You can kind of see I already have Gwynefer. I have Boars as well, so if I didn't have Gwynefer, I could just, you know, add her uh, with equipping him and doing it like that. I'm going to end up top decking a Madras, so it doesn't really matter. Or, I'm sorry, Merlin to go into Madras, so it doesn't really matter. But I, I had the out anyway. Gwynefer, she does not target when you use her, so this is your bread and butter uh, combo, right? You go to Madras, you go into your Boars with an equip card, Boars, the Gallatin, whatever equip card gets researched, Boars, I search two traps, then I search whatever else I want. I actually search three traps in this situation, but I could have searched another equip card if I wanted to and just have two traps, but three works just as well. Two gets into the grave and one in my hand for discard material later. 
I equip the Gwyneth and Madron, set my Karma Cut uh, as well for any follow-up he has. I swing into Obelisk with my Dark Monster. Madron's a Dark Monster now, and boom, goodbye Obelisk the Tormentor. My opponent continues his plays, ends up making a uh, a, a Trinity, <laughs> which is a huge problem as well, but ultimately does not end up mattering because I do have the Karma Cut set. Uh, if I didn't have to deal with Obelisk either, uh, like I would have been fine. I could have just as easily uh, stopped this Trinity from killing me. Um, I could just easily use the Trap card from my graveyard to bring out another level 4. I can activate the Merlin to uh, rank up into a rank 4 and then put myself into defense mode so that way he does not have a way to lethal me. I can go into something like King Custodian so I can float from the extra deck. I can go into my uh, uh, my normal rank 4 if I want to do that. I can King Custodian probably the best because then you summon King Custodian so he'd swing into King Custodian. King Custodian summons another Xyz monster. He summons the Xyz monster. He summons his attacks into the boars. That's three attacks. That's all he gets. No, no more after that. He only attacks three times. And then in my follow-up turn, I can literally play any card I want to. You know, I can go into a, another trap into Dristan. I can do anything and take it, take him out. It doesn't really matter. But I have the Karma Cut. Easy win at that point through the power of Gwynefer. And here's another replay with Dark Lords. Uh, Dark Lords, they have some effect negation and uh, some monster protection in a, their Dark World Morningstar, which can, you know, prevent himself from being targeted. And you're going to see me kind of use King Custanen to get around uh, that, as well as the Palinor Dristan combo. So quickly going through his plays, he's just going to set up his board uh, as Dark Lord players do. You can see here that I do have that Merlin as well as the Arf, which is pretty much the Madrat at that. Anytime you see Merlin, it's, it's Madrat for the most part. Um, so you can see me, I top deck the Madrat. Not exactly what I wanted at this point since I already had one. Madrat into Arf, Madrat, bring out Boars, re-equip two Boars. He didn't set up his negate, so none of this is getting negated. Even if it did, we still have plays afterwards. Trap, trap, Gwynefer, that's your bread and butter. One trap in hand, one in the graveyard, Gwynefer equipped. I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to go early into my Xseeds. I didn't have to do this, I could have waited for the Dristan combo. Uh, but decide to go a little bit faster just in case he negates me in the follow-up turns. Go ahead, pop one of our monsters, or one of his monsters. He goes ahead and searches for Morningstar, uh, and he's going to make a Morningstar play. That's pretty good for him. Set two cards. Draw Sin, Spell Trap. All good. Let it keep going. And I'm going to show you the Dristan Pelinor combo that ends up happening from this. So he brings out his Morningstar. I can't target it because he had a, another Dark Lord. We do Regeki Break to take out one of the Dark Lord monsters. You can see here I search, he attacks into my King Arturgus, King Arturgus floats, bring back the Madrat in defense mode just for the protection, and now he's going to search uh, that Amdusk. In the beginning of my turn, or the end of his turn, bring out the Pelinor, and then again immediately bring out that Dristan. Here's the combo that I was talking about. You activate any equip card, it could have been the Gwynefer for all we care. Pelinor activates, pops a card, draw a card, re-equip into Dristan, Dristan pops, destroys another monster before he search, of course, first he's going to do that. That all goes through, all is good, and then we're gonna, they're still level 4, they don't get leveled up when they get equipped. Go into the King Custodian, King Custodian now can target that Morningstar, bounce him back. We have Karma Cut, we have Merlin, we have everything to take this guy out. Even if he had 4k life points, he would still be dead. <laughs> Nothing you could really do uh, in this situation from there. But that kind of shows you the power and why I prefer Pelinor. We popped twice and we got a bounce on top of that. Um, very, very, very powerful. And a draw. I drew in a Karma Cut. Like, that's kind of ridiculous because, you know, once Boars, you know, searches your deck a lot, there's not many things left that he can't search at that point. And then you're just top decking like crazy. So those were a couple of fun matches, but let's talk about the meta decks that you'll be facing, especially when you go into... Um, you know, competitive tournament plays. What do you do against, you know, certain backer? Like, what, what's the game plan? Um, and, you know, certain decks. You know, the biggest one being uh, Desperado Barrel Dragon. <laughs> that one is, of course, probably the second best deck in the game, even, you know, by today's standards in this kind of Noble Knight structured metagame that we're into. Uh, Desperado Barrel Dragon doesn't target, so you're not going to be looking to uh, stop him with Dristan or anything, but Noble Arm of Destiny is really, 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 really good at um, 
stopping you from getting destroyed by Desperado Barrel Dragon effects. Uh, and if you equip Gwynefer to any of your light monsters, so your rank monsters, uh, you're basically protecting your monster twice per turn uh, off of Desperado Pop. Um, and you can also set yourself up into a situation where after getting popped, if, if you do get popped, Desperado can't attack after that. Uh, so you can... Um, you can summon either your Xyz monster from your Custodian or a uh, any noble monster from the graveyard from your Arcturus, and you'll be fine <laughs> at that point. Uh, you can just make up follow-up plays at that point as well. Uh, obviously, with the Desperado destruction effects, summoning Desperado from hand, you have multiple pops per turn. You saw the Palinor and the Dristan combo. You also have King Arcturus that can pop, and, and of course, the King Custodian can bounce, which doesn't activate the effect at all to begin with uh, so you have a lots of ways to destroy before the battle phase where desperado would come out and destroy you uh, there's also miss judge miss judge uh if she's on the board you can just activate you know any of your equip spells when they are activated they're basically continuous at that point so even though she negates them it doesn't actually do anything <laughs> so poor miss judge she tries her best, but unfortunately can't do much, uh, and she, you just kind of bypass um, those cards as well. You can also activate, you know, your Karma Cuts to take out the problem cards that, that the, the deck possesses, and then your Raigeki Breaks, you know, pop the back row, assuming it's not Super Team Buddy Force Unite. If it is, it's whatever. They're not going to be able to do anything because you're just going to be popping whatever monster they summon, um, but if it's not then obviously, you know, it's a Karma Cut or something and you took care of it. Uh, you can also be super aggressive against Desperado. So if you go turn one and you don't have the Merlin for crazy plays, uh, you can go into your Arcturus, set your Ballista Squad, and if they set any back row, just go for the back row. <laughs> just go for it. You know what I mean? Because um, you really want to avoid getting Karma Cut. Anything that pops your starters in the beginning is, is annoying uh, turn one, but turn two onwards, if you get hit with those starters, it's not as bad. It's really just karma cut. That's the problem because you have good floating, but you can't do anything from your banish pile. Banish pile is very, very powerful to get hit by. So destiny, noble arms, destiny, really, really good. Uh, make sure you have it equipped. Uh, next up is any control deck. So zombie world, uh, necro valley, um, you know, anything with heavy traps. Uh, if they go first and set up on you, you're probably going to lose with the standard setup. I'm going to be totally honest with you. This deck definitely doesn't do as well going second into those types of situations. Uh, what you can do is side deck into Cosmic, True Nade, stuff like that to get rid of them. Now, if you go first, it's kind of it's it's much simpler, right? You have your Raigeki Breaks to break out of Zombie World and Necro Valley. Necro Valley makes it so your equips can't float back, but you can still equip them and use them to activate their effects. Uh, so you can still do like a Madrod effect. And then you can go to like a King Custodian to bounce those cards and then get a turn that you're free to try and OTK your opponent. Um, zombie World's more annoying because it changes you to Zombie Monsters, so your Noble Arms cannot equip to your normal Noble Monsters. So only Gwynefer can equip at that point in which situation you want to make sure to equip her to a Dristan so you can pop that face up zombie world and free yourself from that situation otherwise you're gonna to have to go into King Custon and bounce the zombie world again try to OTK or they're just gonna play it the following turn um, or that's where you could go into your Paladynamo <laughs> and try to OTK through that as well at that point um, or Diamond Direwolf you can make a Diamond Direwolf to pop the zombie world as well um, or I'm sorry, you can't do that because it'd have to be a specific type. But you can go, you know, maybe not that. But you can go into, 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 um, if you don't have Dristen, for example, you're doing Brothers and something else for whatever reason, like a Madrat uh, Brothers or Boar's Brothers. You can also go into the, um, the rank four, equip Gwynefer, use his effect, you know, non-targeting back or destruction, take out the control cards from there. Uh, control cards, they're going to be trying to take out your Merlin, Boar's, Madrat, your starters, uh, Madrat and Boars, or Madrat and Merlin being your best starter, and Boars being that kind of secondary follow, setting up your graveyard for future success, is going to be super, super clutch for, for him. So if they stop those cards, uh, you're going to have a hard time, because falling behind means you can't, you're going to probably going to brick as you kind of don't top deck into another monster. But if you do set up your board, it's almost unbreakable right now. Uh, against any OTK strategy, heroes, black wings, anything like that, uh, this deck doesn't really care at all, <laughs> to be honest. Um, OTK strategies can usually be stopped with Dristan. If you have the Merlin combo, you summon out Dristan, you stop their starter. They can't do anything. 
Uh, but if you don't have access to that, you can just summon King Artorgus in defense mode. Don't be afraid to go into defense mode, especially with a destiny. You can easily establish that by having Boar send destiny to the graveyard and then King Artorgus re-equipping it from said graveyard. Uh, and which at, which at that point, if they try to OTK you, uh, it's just not going to work out for them because your King Artorgus is going to float, you know? Uh, if you don't have access to that, you can also go King Custodian. King Custodian with a Destiny normally equipped from either Glory or from your hand. You know, they have to swing into King Custodian twice to destroy him, and then he floats into another Exceeds monster that puts Destiny right back on him that they have to then swing or destroy twice more, which is just going to cause him to summon a monster from the graveyard, thus having to go through it again in order to fully o OTK you. So... This deck doesn't really get OTK'd, <laughs> is my point. Um, so you don't have to really worry too much about that happening to you. Uh, outside of that, um, the mirror match. Uh, the mirror match is just the same as any other one. You use your traps to try and disrupt your opponent if you go first. Um, the only thing, and then of course Dristan, you can do your Dristan combo. Stop his Merlin, stop his Madras, stop his Boars. The only thing to keep in mind is enemy controller is huge, 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 huge in the mirror match. Um, you got to be careful of that. Also, uh, all these noble equips can equip to any warrior monster. So if your opponent activates a warrior monster like a noble knight or a neos or something like that, you and you have Arf, you can equip that to your opponent's warrior type and pop their own back row while also reducing their monster's attack points. So very important to keep in mind <laughs> as well. So it's 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 always funny when that works out uh, in your favor. Um, outside of that, uh, if you brick with this deck, which the only real brick with this version is if Balance gives you Gwynefer as your opening monster, and then you get like until Noble Arms are needed again, and then an equip spell, you know, like that's uh, that's the worst. Uh, this list kind of minimizes that happening, but it can still happen. So if it happens to you, I am deeply sorry. You can't win them all. No deck is immune to fully not bricking. Decks will brick from time to time. Uh, but realistically, even if you got like, you opened Gwynefer and then you open like Ballista Squad, there's still a play. Or Raigeki Break or Karma Cut, there's still a play. You're just going to be delayed and hope you top deck any of your monsters. Uh, top decking when you haven't Boar's Milled is a pain. But once you Boar's Mill even once, because think about it, the Madrat's going to pull out the Boars, which pulls out three more cards. You just pulled out four cards out of your deck. Top decking in that situation becomes significantly better than it did before. Um, so that's, you know, keep in mind that it, not all hope is lost if you brick right away, like you're still fine. Uh, same if you go second, a lot of people say, oh, if I go second, there's not much I can do. I'm just going to lose to any back row disruption. Even if they have back row disruption, as long as you have back row disruption to counter that, uh, you just try to reset as many times as possible until you're able to establish your board. You just need one turn to establish at any point in the game and you're right back into it at that point. All right, so that is going to be it for the Noble Knight Guide. Uh, you can see this video ended up being over an hour long. So, you know, I apologize. There was a lot of information to go over. Um, there are still tiny, you know, tiny little bits of things that I didn't go over. Nothing too critical, if I do say so myself. Uh, if, if, if you're interested, definitely check out that DLM guide that I helped write. Or join the Discord. Send me a PM. I'm always down to talk Noble Knights. Uh, ask in the new player help. We have new player helpers that are always very confident and understanding of all the decks that enter the metagame. So they can assist you as well. Or you can just ping me directly in the Discord and I'll see your question. And, you know, when I have time, I'd love to answer it for you as well. But that's going to be it for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this longer kind of, you know, in-depth guide version of the video uh, that I have did. Uh, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace out, YouTube.